All right, let's take a look at the spline wrap. This is by far one of the coolest deformers in Cinema 4D, in my opinion. Now, the spline wrap works like a deformation object and deforms objects using a spline. So an object will move along the spline and be deformed accordingly. So what does that mean? Well, let's come over here and grab a cylinder. Let's make the height of the cylinder 4,000. Let's change its orientation to plus Z. And I'm going to change the height segments to 50. So one thing to remember when you're working with the spline wrap is that whatever you're going to deform needs to have plenty of segments. So I'm going to middle mouse click here and go to a four-way view and then middle mouse click on the top. And I'm going to grab my B spline. And I'm going to just draw a little path for our cylinder to deform on. Let's go back here. So we've got our path. Just adjust it a little bit. Bring some of these up and some of them down. Just so it has a little more interesting path. So we've got our cylinder. We're going to come over here to our deformers and we're going to choose spline wrap. We're going to take the spline wrap, put it underneath the cylinder, and then nothing happens. It's because the spline wrap needs a spline to work on. So we drag the spline right there. And then we're going to get this huge mess. And that's because we have the mode set to fit spline. We need to change it to keep length. It means to keep the length of the cylinder. Just jump up on the cylinder by framing it. And you'll notice that our cylinder is not fitting on the path. So that's because we have the orientation for the spline wrap set to plus X. We need to change that to plus Z. And then we have the cylinder on the path. So now what we can do is we can adjust the offset and you can see the cylinder going across the spline. So let me just go over here where we might be able to see some of it a little better. Maybe right here. And drag the offset again. There you go. It's pretty cool. And of course, all of these parameters are animatable. So on the spline wrap, we have the axis. Obviously, that's the axis that it's going to be running along. The strength, you use this slider to adjust the overall strength of the deformation. Most cases, 100% is just fine. And the offset, we've already used that. That's how you actually move it along the spline. From and to, these work in conjunction with fit spline. So if we go to fit spline, you'll see that the cylinder is now around the whole spline. If I just pull out here, you can see that it's trying to wrap itself around the whole spline. So if this number is set to zero and this one's set to 100%, that means it's going to work along the entire spline. If this number is set to 50%, then it's only deforming itself over 50% of the spline. So if we take this back to zero so we can get a better idea of what we're looking at here. So now at zero to 50%, the cylinder is only being deformed over 50% of the spline. If I change the two number to 100%, then you can see now it's being deformed over 100% of the spline. So let's take that back to keep length. Zoom back up here. Pull our offset through. Let's get something about like that so we can see it. Now, we have some other parameters down here. The size, so we can control the size of the cylinder. And we can use the control click or command on a Mac click method to put our own parameters in there to get some different deformations. So you can see now it's sort of getting thin in the middle and staying fatter on both ends. We have spline size. That's going to work on the spline. We have rotation. So we can control the rotation of the actual object or the rotation of the spline. And just to show you that this also works with parametric objects, let's take our helix, frame that up, and we will change it to XZ. Make it, say, a thousand. There we go. 
And we'll make some other adjustments here. And the radial bias, do something like that. Let's take another cylinder. Take the height segments up again. Make it 400. And we'll come over here and we'll grab our spline wrap one more time. Put it underneath our cylinder. And in the spline wrap, we'll take the helix and drop it in the spline. Make it to fit length. And we'll change this to plus Y. So now if we drag our offset, let's actually make that longer. Get more of a snake thing going on. Go back to our spline wrap. So you can see now that this works not only with splines, but also with parametric objects. So that's the spline wrap. Very powerful, a lot of fun to use. Take it out and start playing with it. I'm sure you're going to find a million uses for it.